Hey everyone, it's Raji back for another Figma in 5 and our topic this time is just all tips. You all have been asking for these tips, seething for these tips. You want the tips, you need the tips. And so this session is gonna be all about jamming your brains filled with this design knowledge so that at the end of it, you are a Figma god. Really, you're a Figma god and hopefully a better designer, a better human, a better person. Well, let's jump right in. Let's start with doing some zooming. Uh, to start, if I want to zoom into this selection, I can just hold command and mouse wheel or trackpad and it'll zoom into wherever my cursor is. Additionally, I can use shift 2 to zoom into a selection. Yet another way of jumping into that selection would be double clicking on the icon in the layers panel. Let's talk about traversing layers. I've got a really complex component here and I want to go ahead and select all the child layers. If I hit enter on the selection, it'll select all child layers of a component or frame. If I hit tab, I can actually tab through the layers or shift tab will reverse tab through those layers. If I hit shift enter, I'll select the parent of my selected object. Now, this complex component has a ton of different nested components inside of it. What if I want to detach this and detach all of the subsequent layers underneath it? If I hit command forward slash, I'll bring up my quick search menu for keyboard shortcuts and commands. Now, if I type in detach, you'll see something really great here. I have deep detach all selected instances. And if I click that, you can see now that I've detached all of those layers. If I keep hitting enter, I can expand out all those layers and see that they've all been detached. Did you know that double clicking a menu will bring you to the image fill menu? But also even better than that, option double clicking will bring you into the image crop menu. If you ever need to be able to change the scale of your interface, check out these commands here. You can make them larger or smaller here with option command minus or plus. If you'd also like to change the location or turn off your layers panels, you can simply hit command and backslash or command and period to be able to toggle that interface on the left and right hand side. Additionally, you can turn off just one of those. If you go into the view menu, you go into panels, you can turn off the left sidebar. Let's do some nudging. Nudging is when you have an object selected and I use my arrow keys. Notice it's moving around by one pixel at a time. If I hold shift, I'll use a big nudge and that's moving around 10 pixels at a time. If I go under my preferences and my nudge amount, I can change those amounts. Maybe I can use big nudge at eight. Now when I move, it'll stay on my eight pixel grid, but maybe when I'm zoomed in, I only wanna do half a pixel nudge amounts. So I can specify small nudge to be a half a pixel. And that's not all you can nudge. Look at this color. By using arrows up and down, I can darken and lighten. Holding shift and going up and down, I can darken and lighten that color even more rapidly. Additionally, I can come into here and use my mouse wheel on the color gradient here. This will slide up and down my hues. If I hold option as I scroll, you can see that I can actually slide up and down my opacity. Did you know that any field you can scrub by dragging on the icon? Notice how I can change the height, even wrap around my dragging to scrub at different values and higher speeds. I can change the degree of this arc or by holding shift, I can use increments and go up and down at scrub at slower speeds. But any field is scrubbable just by holding alt on it. So if I come to this text field that doesn't have an icon and I hold option or alt, I can actually quickly scrub that opacity for that blur or quickly scrub that blur to be much larger. With this component, I wanna be able to resize it and have this close button stick to the upper right. What I'm gonna do is hold command to drill into a sub object and I can now set it to the right without having to double or triple click this to get into it. The other thing that I've done is I've set up this glyph with a locked layer. That way when my designers command click, they won't click the actual glyph, but they'll click the whole button. Now let's see how the constraints work. If we ever want to ignore those constraints, we can now hold the command key while resizing the frame and it'll ignore the constraints. If we ever want to see all the layers underneath a clipped frame, we can hit Command Y and see an outline mode showing all the layers underneath that clipped frame. I've got a bunch of SVG icons here, and I'm just going to drag them in and I'd like to turn them into components to be able to use for my project. 
Using tidy up on the screen here, I can align all my icons. I can specify space between or vertical space between or actually type it in here if I'd like to create it to be uniform. Additionally, with tidy, I can drag items around here. Once I'm done and I'm ready to be able to turn these into components, simply just drop down the component menu to create multiple components. Now we've created all of our icons, but the names are all strange. So I'd like to go in and batch rename. I can use Command R or just right click and rename on all the selection. Now I'm gonna use a little regex magic here, but suffice it to know that I'm just saying match three digits in a row with a dash. And then let's just replace this with icons slash. So once I rename all of these, we can see now that our icons are named how we want them to be. And under the assets here, I can see that they're categorized under icons. Want an easy way to create a single sided border like this in Figma? Just use an inner shadow with a negative on the Y axis and you can create a single sided border. Holding option and dragging down one of these frames and if I keep hitting command D, I'm gonna be able to duplicate this with the same offset as the previous one that I pasted. Here we've duplicated this name field to create an address field, but we no longer want it to be called name. If you simply just delete the text out of the name of the layer, it'll become the value of the text itself inside. Here I've selected the vector inside of this icon, but what if I want to select something up this tree? Now normally what I could do is go through my layers panel here, but a cool trick would be to hold command while right clicking that object and I can get a menu of the full hierarchy above and below this object and select the thing that I want. Thanks for joining me, Raji, in another episode of Figma in 5. Now in this episode, I had so many tricks lined up that we've got another episode of all tricks dropping next Tuesday. Feel free to like and subscribe if you're digging this content to keep on going.